Hi guys, my name is Lewis with PremiumBeat.com and this is episode 1 of the DaVinci Resolve 15 Editing Crash Course. Now, I know nobody likes listening to an introduction in a tutorial, but there are two factors I need to introduce. First, I am a certified Resolve trainer and what you are being taught today is an incredibly condensed version of what I was taught to train new editors on this platform. And that runs into the second factor. This is an incredibly condensed crash course. I think it's dishonest to say that you will be proficient at editing with Resolve from a 50 minute YouTube series. However, what you will have is the knowledge and the foundation of how things work and to perform enough tasks to set you on your voyage of becoming a skillful Resolve editor. So for example, in this episode, we're gonna look at the media page and one aspect is importing media files. There are gonna be several advanced options such as importing based on EDLs or to import with a source code offset. But these are the advanced elements that will be omitted from the crash course as it's just gonna increase the overall time dramatically. And like a proud parent, we're just looking to get you pedaling without stabilizers. With that said, let's get to it. And remember, DaVinci Resolve 15 is free. There is a studio version with more advanced features and powerful plugins, but you're gonna be able to edit just fine with the free version. So make sure you have that installed so you can follow along. In episode one, we're going to look at creating a new project, organizing your media and the media page. Upon loading Resolve, you will first be greeted with the project manager. This is where you will open, create, import and export projects. Note this isn't where you will save projects in a folder based sense like Premiere. All of your projects are kept to a database. This is something that we will look at in our settings segment. To create a new project, you can either hit the untitled project icon or right click and select create a new project. Both methods will take you to the same place, which is the media page. The media page is where you will be importing and organizing all of your media. Although over the last two years, Resolve has become very user friendly to just being able to drag your file from your desktop and onto your timeline and it will be automatically imported into your media pool. Way back when you had to import files from a specified media destination. So this is the media page, the first of six pages and it was only two years ago that it was the first of four. First, we'll head to the media browser in the top left corner of the page. This is where you will navigate your media drives to find your footage, music, stills and everything else. Resolve's interface is very user friendly and you'll find that if you need the extra space to view a panel, 95% of the time you're gonna be able to extend it by either hitting this panel extension icon here or by increasing the area by dragging the panel. To say there aren't many ways to import your footage would be a gross understatement. And you may think it's a bit ridiculous with how many ways you can import your footage, but you'll be surprised at how useful each method is. First, let's look at importing a single media clip. I've navigated to my stock footage folder and I need to import the clip which is an aerial of a forest landscape. There are several ways that you can change the way to browse your media. We can increase or decrease the size of the icons. We can rearrange the order in which they display. We can switch to a list view, perhaps if you're able to tell which file you need from specific metadata. And we can choose which metadata to display by right clicking on any category titles. Of course, we then also have the search bar, which is great if the file has already been named. I like to have medium sized icons to browse my footage. And if you scrub your mouse over the thumbnail, you can see the contents of the clip. However, it's rather small, right? Well, a recent and fantastic addition has been the inclusion of the live media preview, which you can activate in the top right of the preview monitor by clicking the ellipsis. And just as a rule of thumb, these ellipses are found throughout the different pages will also have an abundance of options tucked in them. So I'm gonna activate the live media preview. And now when we come back to our clip and scrub over the top, you'll see the clip appear in the preview monitor. You don't have to click it, you don't have to import it, you just scrub over the thumbnail and by doing so it activates the live preview function. If you do have a less than par computer, perhaps leave this function off. Within the preview monitor, you can also display the audio waveform, either at a full length or at zoomed in. Useful for when you're trying to find something specific in your clip which relates to a sound. With my clip selected, I can just drag it from the preview monitor into the media pool, or I can right click and choose add to media pool. You can highlight several clips, or you can individually select multiple clips by holding control and then import with the previous methods. Browsing from folder to folder also doesn't have to be difficult. There are gonna be situations where it's impractical to import the entire contents of a folder, but navigating to that folder can get a tedious task because it's placed deep within a folder ladder. 
For example, you may have some folders on your desktop, perhaps After Effects textures, which are stored in your After Effects folder, which is then stored in your compositing folder, which is then stored in your filmmaking folder. Well, you get the point. It can become tiring. Well, you can favorite folders by right clicking a folder in the media storage browser and select add folder to favorites. When you've done that, the folder will then appear in the favorite section, allowing you to quickly enter the folder without the annoyance of making your way through several different folders. And while on the discussion of folders, it should be noted that you can import the entire folder and its contents by right clicking and selecting import folder. And then there's this option, import folder and subfolder into bins which takes us to the next section of the media page, bin management. There's no denying the importance of an organized media foundation for your edit. It makes finding the content incredibly easy and will decrease the amount of administration work instead of creative editing. In Resolve, folders that will store your media clips and timelines are called bins. You can create one by simply right clicking and hitting create new bin, and you can do this in the media pool or in the bin area. Like creating folders on your desktop, you can create an entire hierarchy of bins within your media pool to keep your audio and video clips organized. Now, what if you've already gone through the audacious process of organizing a folder hierarchy on your desktop? If so, don't worry, because you can import the folders and create bins at the same time. Right click on a folder and hit import folder and subfolder create bins. In doing so, Resolve will import all of your media and create bins based on how the media files were stored on your desktop or portable hard drive. Easy. The way you can import and organize your media is great, fantastic for better words, but we can take it a step further with Resolve's built-in filtration system, Smart Bins. Now, my favorite way to describe Smart Bins is that they're essentially like an iTunes Smart Playlist. You know the playlists where you could have songs automatically added depending on various properties, such as genre or date released? Well, Smart Bins are the same, but more powerful. So to create a smart bin, you right click in the smart bin panel and you of course select smart bin. The smart bin menu will pop up and you now select what you want to be filtered from your media pool. You can quite literally use any element associated with a media file from resolution, format to the bit depth. This is great for when you're working with a large quantity of media files and the mixed format, but they have been named in a manner where they all look like they've come from the same camera. The final panel on the media page we're gonna look at is the metadata panel. If not visible, you guessed it, you hit the button that says metadata. And here you will find all of the metadata associated with the selected media clip. Now, if you've come in to resolve with it being your first non-linear editor, perhaps there may be little to no reason to open the metadata panel. However, as we have progressed through this episode, there's been a consistent theme that I've pushed, and that is that the media page is for organizing your edit. If your clips lack metadata, most DSLR and mirrorless cameras only have the core basics of the camera properties, and here you can add that data which will be helpful for when it comes to searching for that content when you get to editing. At first you're going to be presented with just the clip details which you cannot edit. But to get to all sections of the metadata you just hit this icon and select all groups. This shot was from an Ursa Mini and I was able to add a few elements of the scene to the camera itself such as the location properties and the name of the film. But here in Resolve I can now add some extra elements such as the best take uh, but there's sound issues or something along those lines. So when it comes to the edit and you start to cut your footage, you're not gonna have to go through the entire clip to see if this was the take with the lousy sound. So this is the media page. After this tutorial, you should be able to grasp the basics of being able to import your media in a variety of different ways and get that media ready for the edit. In episode two of the Premium Beat Crash Course, we'll be looking at the edit page and the various ways in which you can edit your footage. Until next time.